and welcome to another episode of Classroom. The big takeaway from the budget, aside from anything else, was that people started watching the bond market much more carefully. There was a lot of talk about where bond yields would head and how that would impact both the economy, also the stock market, and of course your own call on which kind of fund you should be investing in. So why are bond yields so important for our lives? Two gentlemen join in to deconstruct the whole mystery behind that. Nilesh Shah, Deputy MD of ICI Pro AMC, and Rajiv Anand, CEO of Access Mutual Fund. Gentlemen, great to have both of you on the show. Nilesh, let me start with you. Just in terms of a basic definition, what are bond yields a function of? Bond yield, like any other market yield, is a function of demand and supply. This is the yield or price at which the seller is willing to sell and buyer is willing to buy. Rajiv, you would go with the same definition in terms of what influences the yield or what it's a function of? Uh, broadly, yes, but I think um, uh, unlike the equity markets, for example, there is also a time value of money that, that goes into fixed income. So therefore, you know, we have what is called a yield curve, which means that there is a, there is a yield for a, for a bond that is maturing at the end of one year, at the, uh, for a bond that is maturing at the end of five years, ten years, thirty years, and so on and so forth. Put all those points together, you, you, what you get is, is really a yield curve. And what the bond market uh, participants are really looking at is, is how various parts of, of the yield curve are reacting uh, at various points in time to various, you know, sort of macroeconomic parameters. Mm. Really, so what does it mean when we say that the yield curve is probably going to harden at the longer end? And why did that outcome or, or why did people make that reaction or outcome post the budget and the kind of borrowing program the government announced? What's the connection there? The bond yield and bond prices have an inverse relationship, which means as the yield starts going up, the price starts depreciating or decreasing, and an investor will lose money. Normally, when the government announces budget, they also announce the borrowing program for next year. If the borrowing program is more than the expectation of the market, then the, it means that the supply is higher, people will demand higher prices for that supply which means the rates will start shooting up which means prices will go down and investors who are holding current bond portfolio will actually lose money because of hardening of yield. So that's how the budget is getting connected to the bond prices in very simple commonsensical manner. Rajiv, you want to fly, flesh that out? I mean when the government announced the budget, the other takeaway was how high the fiscal deficit would get, that we were actually taking at perhaps 10 to 11 percent of, of GDP. How does the bond market react to all that news and how does all that sit on the shoulders of the bond yield? What do I take away from it? If the government's borrowing program is high, what happens with the yield over the next couple of months? Uh, the fact that the government has a fiscal deficit, uh, what it really means is that uh, in a sense, it, it's spending uh, more uh, more than its, its its revenue, and that gap needs to be uh, filled uh, by borrowing from from the market, or i.e., as Nilesh called it, the market borrowing number. One of the factors that drives uh, market uh, yields up or down is the amount of uh, of borrowing that the government has. India uh, is has been running a large current account, uh, sorry, a fiscal deficit for many, many years, so therefore, in a sense, it is the largest borrower in the marketplace. The market, at any point in time, is estimating how this demand and supply arithmetic is, is playing out, and so therefore, if, if we have some sort of a reasonable estimate of, of demand, the, the other side of the picture really is the supply, which is, which is the government borrowing program. Today, what is happening is that because of the supply fears, the long end of the curve is going up, and because the RBI is cutting rates and pumping uh, liquidity into the system, the short end is actually rallying. So therefore, you've got uh, the overnight rates at three and a half percent, and today uh, the ten-year is, is is around seven quarter. So that's what what today has happened is what is called a bear steepening of the yield curve, where the short end of the yield curve has rallied and the long end of the yield curve has depreciated. Nilesh, you want to come in on that just in terms of a, a diagram or an alphabet? For a lot of people, the direction of the bond yields is U-shaped. Would you go with that? And if we're at 7% now, where would you say we are in the U? The bond market is fairly dynamic. It gets influenced by many factors. And hence, it will be very difficult to say that the bond yield curve is in U-shape and at 7%, 
which side of you we are in the bond market the regulator wise the reserve bank of india can actually buy the bonds because they have the cash to buy the bonds and also they have ability to sell the bonds from their holding or from the issuance of the government so the regulator in bond market has immense ability to influence the yield they have ability to influence yield by talking by also taking action in terms of buying and selling many years back we used to have a fairly vibrant bond market with many different maturities trading on a fairly liquid manner today probably compared to those days between 97 and 2003 the depth of the market has come down little bit the number of securities which are traded is uh, you know not really smooth flowing in terms of yield curve and hence we have a yield curve which is not really perfect it is little bit uh, less perfect compared to the past and this shows the depth of the market especially when interest rates are rising and prices are falling not many investors will be willing to hold on to their bond portfolio and hence the shape of the yield curve does get vitiated because of their action and hence it is impossible to say whether it's u shaped uh, yield curve or y shaped yield <laughs> curve or x shaped yield curve it's it changes it's dynamic Okay on that note let's head into a break when we come back let's shift away from the macro impact of this and talk about why banks have been under pressure because of all this talk about yields and I'm going to ask both gentlemen to pick for you between an equity fund or a gilt fund for the rest of this year that's coming up as we slip into a break here's a bit more on the life of yields In the heydays of the bull market bonds were seen as the poor cousins of shares in significant returns longer lock-ins excitement of the stock markets but things have turned around since 2008 so here's a quick how to primer on the bond market the most commonly talked about bonds include government securities corporate bonds commercial paper and treasury bills there's either a fixed or floating rate on them which means the quantum of interest either remains fixed throughout or varies here's an example of a fixed 10 year bond a 10 year bond issued today bears an 8% interest even if 5 years from now interest rates in the economy slip to 5% you will still earn 8% interest here are the characteristics of bonds the first is a face value which means the amount of money you get when the bond matures so when a bond is trading above that face or par value it's at a premium and similarly it's at a discount when it's below the next thing to watch out for is the coupon or interest rate that's what you get as interest payments here's another example If a bond pays a coupon of 10% and its face value is 1000 rupees that means you get 100 rupees as interest every year. One term you will hear time and again on this show is yields. Yields are the returns that you would get if you were to buy a bond at its current price. So price divided by interest rate gives you the yield. The other part of investing in bonds is the maturity date. The day when your basic investment amount or principal is repaid. that could be as short as one day or as long as 30 years it's usually easier to predict a one year move so the longer the maturity time the higher the interest rate on the bond on the subject of safety a government bond is far safer than one floated by a corporation